Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Ian Fuego here. Back with another horror comic book review. This is another of the branded comic book reviews. I still have a bunch of series to get through, and this one has actually, it's one that we both read a couple months ago at Long this time point. Long time coming! And, uh, <laughs> and we're finally getting around to reviewing it, but... Um, so, Fuego, go ahead and reveal. We are reviewing... Well, you clicked on the video. It's yeah. Doll Man Kills the Full ah. Moon Universe. Yes, taking a cue from Marvel, I would imagine. Yes, you know, it started with... with the Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe, and then, and then they've Deadpool. done Deadpool yeah. Kills the Marvel Universe, and Kills the Marvel Universe again, and, no and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Alternate timeline. Kill him out. So God this one out. is um, all through the Full Moon Universe. Uh, Doll Man goes through and is basically on a rampage killing all of the full moon characters and i don't even know if you ever really figure out why i just was breezing back through Not some really, of the no. issues and it's left very very vague i mean the book basically starts out with these kids performing like a evil satanic ritual trying mm -hmm. to gain powers and they're at this park and lo and behold the demonic toys show up who Dollman has gone face to face and head to head with before in mm -hmm. the Dollman versus the Demonic Toys movie, which, I mean, as much as I love love Tim Thomerson, I've always preferred. And there's a That's reason a Patreon we won request it. from last month. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so we got to uh, watch Dollman. It. Yep, Dollman versus Demonic Toys uh, well. specifically. Um, well, if the, that, that, <laughs> oh. hey, that one was a lot better than Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys, which That's I'm true. not even sure if that was. It had. Uh, Kurt Feldman in it, and I'm not sure if it even was made under the Full Moon banner. I think it was a sci-fi movie. It might have been, yeah, because it was really, not good. Really, really trash. And, um, I don't know. It's not bad. Tim, Tim Thomerson makes anything watchable, but I definitely prefer his other Full Moon character, Jack Death, from the Transfers movies. Which in is in there. In comparison with Dollman. Yeah, he shows up in the sixth issue, which you had to kind of just wonder if they're going through every iconic Full Moon property except for... I think subspecies is the only one you don't get to yeah, see. Yeah, no, no subspecies. Which I thought was really kind of that odd. That was a bummer. Yeah, but you see everything else, including lots of small, minor little characters. Well, we'll stuff, show them. But... We'll show them throughout the covers because um, yeah. this is cover number one. So, uh -huh. Doll Man Kills the Full Moon Universe. Yeah, and, you get um, the and the first toys. one is versus the Demonic Toys. And then the backup on this one was... Yeah, that's Head of the Family, if I remember Head of the correctly. Family, yeah. Yeah, so, so basically what they do with this comic is for each of the six issues, except for the last one... Um, they have a main story, and then there's a little bonus story that focuses on, like, a less-known Full Moon property, I would say. And so, yeah, we get uh, yeah, we get demonic toys at the beginning, mm -hmm. and the kids get killed and all this other stuff. But um, the, 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 the master, or whatever they, they call this, like, big super bad demon, whatever, that the kids were trying to resurrect and that the demonic toys are, like, emissaries of, basically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Bardo basically takes his heart out and brings it with him because he's trying to set set this timeline right, I guess. In his universe, he's trying to kill every bad character in this particular universe, although it does turn out to have some repercussions mm -hmm. in the sixth issue that, well, obviously he didn't think about. So, so that's kind of cool. And, and it really just turns into beat for beat, issue by issue. He fights for a few pages with this particular iconic full moon character or troop of villains or whatever and and that's about it although we do get some good guys you know we do have as you said jack death shows up in the sixth book and Here's then we a also little bit of artwork from the first issue mm -hmm. so those are the kids who are trying very desperately well that's the uh that's the master evil one great one whatever the hell it is and you've so got that. so yeah that so there's there's some good artwork i think the artwork is a bit here and there well, um, well, and they and change some very exploitative. And, yeah, and they change. Yeah, look at that. Uh, up, up, I mean, come up on. the butt shot. Yeah, but, that's a little aggressive. Well, I mean, some of the best. She's boob, wearing her underwear though. Some yeah. of the best boobs I've ever seen are in Puppet Master too. So I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not. It's Calm not down. like it's Calm not down. like Full Moon was really ever averse to such things. <laughs> but so you have a writing slash artistic team for the big main book, and then you always have a different team for for the backup. The, the backup, which is maybe five pages tops, mm -hmm. and then there's fake ads and stuff which are cool and uh also screaming soup had a uh they had a hand in this book indeed screaming soup friends of the show did um little sort of advertisements uh in between all of the different uh uh 
So, um, so they did these then? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, so I think this was that's theirs. all the different demonic toys. Because of the demonic toys, you've got like... So the they people... did an ad at the end of every comic. Yeah. And Screaming Soup are, you know, they're really funny animated YouTube channel having yeah. to do with horror. I was never particularly too big into the demonic toys. I was obviously more so in the Puppet Master and whatnot. But, I mean, you've got your, your evil, like, Care Bear kind of thing. You've got your evil little baby. You've got your Jack in the Box. Baby you've Oopsie. Your, yes, exactly. <laughs> Who talks like a, a little schmuck demon? Like I don't, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Second issue was um, Dollman versus Puppet Master, and the backup was Castle Freak, yeah. which actually was another Patreon request. So you'll mm -hmm. be seeing a review of that yeah, in, this, Gordon, in the somewhat man. distant future. Yeah, Castle Freak is good, and uh, you know it's it's funny because. Um, the, the second issue artwork. I do like the way they frame up the second issue with the Puppet Master because of the fact that Jack Death basically... So so you know how in the Puppet Master films, it's like whoever is the Puppet Master is the one who controls them and gets them to be either good or evil, mm -hmm. which is why in 3 and 4 and 5 they become good and you know they, they flip the script a little bit. But so... I so like how this way. Yeah. So so Bardo basically becomes their master and tells them they'll start killing each other. And so all of the puppet master puppets go fighting with themselves. And mm -hmm. he's all surprised Leech Woman is the first to die because he thinks she's kind of hot. She's like about his size. So you know, being being a little dull man as Bardo is, and your then you're Blade very... fights Pinhead, and mm -hmm. it's really badass. Oh, and Tunneler going at uh, you know somebody is really cool as well. And it mm -hmm. comes down to Jester. And, and Blade, Blade. Yeah. and so you'll be surprised who ends up taking it, man. Really, really. But then Six Shooter shows up, so you know it's not completely, completely done. But uh, it, it's cool because Bardo ends up leaving with Blade's Blade at the very end of the issue, which is kind of cool. He's like, I could put this to good use. And mm -hmm. if you flip the last page right here, I actually like this. I think it looks pretty, pretty cool. Where he's like taking over the Blade Blade, and like yeah, you know, and using it. it like a sword. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Because cool. Doll Man is obviously the size of a doll. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and so then, he's uh, an alien space cop of sorts that has basically, you know, been, been shrunk So this is the Screaming and... Soup sample for this Killjoy's cartoon Kill Zone. Yeah. Um, that's their entry there. It's a fun little advertisement for something that doesn't exist. And Love yet that. we don't have Killjoy show up until issue four or five, if I remember correctly. No, I actually liked the Castle Freak this, artwork because this, art this was totally cool. different. Yeah. Like, look at how different that is, and that's mm -hmm. just for the five-page Castle Freak story arc. It's unfortunate it's that so there's, cool looking. it's so underserved as far as just the dimension and the discussion. The artwork is beautiful looking, though, man, mm -hmm. and it's gross, and I like how, how it's got this, like, painted, like, look to it of sorts, which is pretty rad status. Yep. And then three is where we actually get into, finally, a little bit more universe building of this storyline, because there is a wizard... Dr. Mordred. Mordred. Yeah, Mordred. Oh, Mordred, sorry, you're right. Yeah, and so Dr. Mordred is basically... And the Creepazoids in the back half. Yeah, so, and, and that's the back half little bonus story. But basically what happened, what ends up happening with Mordred is Mordred, being a good character, teams up with Dollman, and they go against these three, like, evil shaman, wizard, warlock, whatever the hell you want. I think there's two women and one man, and well, well one's like a little girl. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's it's basically the, the students of... His former, um, oh, I want to say it's Cabal, is this guy Ooh. that he trained with, and like That's one of cool. them had a good amulet, a light amulet, and one of them had a dark amulet, and so yeah, the trainees of his friend Cabal, or one-time friend with the dark amulet, is the one that him and uh, Dollman end up going after, and so yeah, it's just a, a further means of them trying to cleanse this timeline and this this universe of theirs of all these full moon demons. But it's funny because at the very end, Dollman kind of. He kind of turns the tables a little bit on Mordred because mm -hmm. in this in this former planet that he was on, they had these little devices that they installed in people with magic powers to stop them from using their magic powers. It's like almost like a little self-destruct bomb that goes mm -hmm. right to the heart. And if you try to use those powers, you are blown to shreds. And so he's like, sorry, Mordred, I'm not going to let you use these powers anymore. And this will stop you from using them because you know you'll die if you use them. And... Yet, yeah, they, they still kind of maintain a friendship. In some of the later issues, he's, like, sending him, you know, additional updates and reconnaissance and even some of the other dead Full Moon characters as he continues killing them, like the Ragdoll. And, and I'm trying to remember which Charles Band property that was from. It's totally eluding me. There was another Killer Doll movie that he did, and I cannot remember what the hell it was called. I don't know. It was totally... Totally it's probably its listed own, in the next one. It was totally its own little in, individualized in property. Anyway. But I thought these creatures were actually... Yeah, the Creepazoid. They are interesting up. because there's like there's like a weird baby under this mutant exoskeleton 
of sorts that we have here. And so that's why he has the suit on, because if you get that nasty goop on you, you will turn into one of those creepazoids. Mm -hmm. And so he has to basically take this exoskeleton alien off to reveal the weird little baby. And he's like, what's going to happen with the baby? Will it be get another creature? Will it this? And he's like, well, I'll just kill it just to make sure anyway. Yeah. And so that's what we get in issue three. And then moving and on to issue four, we'll kind of cruise a little bit here because this is going to be a long one. This is the one with the Killjoys, if I remember yep. correctly, right? Issue four was Killjoy and, and the Hideous backup. Yeah, and uh, Hideous, not very exciting. It's just basically mm -hmm. this guy who collects all of these different creatures for like a pseudo museum, almost like that Star Trek uh, Next Generation, that story all uh, the the most toys or the, uh, all the toys or something like that really really cool and it's about this guy who wants to bring data into his collection but um yeah what happens with the killjoys is that you realize this is where they reveal what mordred and uh and bardo are doing together is they're basically making a dreamlike world mm -hmm. to lure in the killjoys like killjoy and then his weird little very harley quinn -esque, of terrors, -esque yeah. girlfriend and the bait that they use is the kids that die at the very beginning of the first issue. Mm -hmm. And so as opposed to having collateral damage and having to use real bait, they just, in this dreamlike world of theirs, use the use the dead spirits of these kids from the first issue. So, I mean, it's it does have some interconnectivity. It's not just like a one-shot after one-shot after one-shot. There is kind of a mythology built within, within some of these issues, even if it doesn't connect too directly. I did laugh where Killjoy is like, yeah, I didn't tell you about Houdini. the piranhas, did I? Yeah. yeah, you don't just have to escape the water, Houdini style. You have to escape the piranhas as well. And he's like, I know his dick's not escaping because the piranha goes right for the kid's cock. It's really yeah. really kind of grody and whatnot. But, um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, he has some fun killjoy in his universe, but eventually... There's some amusing one you know, there's and, The doll man mm -hmm. does get him taken out. Mm -hmm. And then the hideous in the background is uh, the is what you talked one, about earlier. Yeah, the so. art in that one didn't really impress me too much. And that's the thing. The back half one-shots, with the exception of him killing the head of the family and, like, that because they end up getting they, they end up taking all of their There's loot. The Screaming Soup Edition, the trash bag yeah. costumes. <laughs> but they take all of the loot from the head of the family, like, compound of sorts, and that's what uh, Dollman is able to use to further some of his later in endeavors of fighting and whatnot. And then in issue five is where they just go balls to the wall and they go character crazy. I mean, just look at the look at the cover. You get some. So you get Ragdoll, Ginger, Ragdoll, Ginger Dead Man, Speed Peep. You get the creeps in there, people, which are all the Doctor Alien. Yeah, and the creeps are all the little midget uh, Universal I. monsters. Remember? Mm -hmm. You ever see the? Yeah, the creeps was okay. It had some. It had some familiar faces in it that I've seen in a few different things. And there's a. Uh, so There's a big a, kaiju in this one, too. Yeah, and he shrinks it down because he basically gets the same little ray ability that's in bad channels for them to shrink themselves down. Mm -hmm. And so he shrinks down this nurse that he has the hots for that you see at the very end of the sixth issue. And he just goes around shrinking down big kaiju monsters and shrinking down, you know, the creeps to a smaller size that he can fight. And yeah, he just... It, this is like a, a lightning round of sorts, this particular issue mm -hmm. of him just cleaning up the last of all the creatures that haven't been mentioned, except no Radu! No subspecies, No Radu from damn subspecies, it. and this one doesn't have a backup either. I don't, oh, yes, it does. Yeah, it does. This but one has the seed people. Yeah, right. and the seed people are apparently responsible for Roanoke and the fact and that... And here's the full moon, the Screaming yeah, Soup Yeah, Jack ad. Death, dude! Well, and the Screaming Soup ad yeah, that right too. here across from it, but yeah, that's Jack Death right there. Yeah. So he shows up at the end of five. Yeah, Jack Death is great, oh, man. Seed Jack Death. Well, well, the seed people are basically, like, they, they were lying dormant, ready to sprout and hatch and stuff, and they do claim in the writing that Roanoke was what... They, they happened uh, because of seed people. That's why mm -hmm. everybody disappeared and they were all killed so quickly. And the cool thing about Jack Death is we find out the reason he's showing up, and if you're familiar with the Trancers movies, which I really recommend the first couple at least. Number two has Helen Hunt in it. Uh, actually, number one does as well. So she was in a small role in one. She's also in two. She's, uh, she's Jack Death's wife. Oh, and, wow. uh yeah, it was before Mad About You and before she became a big star. But what Jack Death basically shows up to tell Bardo about is the fact that first they recognize that they look identical and they're mm -hmm. all tripped out by it. And they have some funny, funny lines. Same back actor, right? That Tim Thomerson plays yeah. both, yeah, mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, but yeah, basically Jack Death shows up and he's like, yeah, I, I police timelines and you have messed up your timeline because by going and killing all of these different evil characters, it almost left the door open for even more evil things to transpire. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, 
Uh, let's just say, without giving all this away, because we're not trying to spoil the whole miniseries. Right. Um, so, Castle Freak, for instance. Um, by going and killing that uh, that brother who is the Castle Freak, uh, that castle ends up being turned into, by just weird, unsavory people, a place to, uh, to have, like, human running of prostitutes and, you know, illegal immigrants and all this different stuff. And then by killing, um, you know, just just basically any time one, it, it's like the lesser of two evils is the theme that they really explore, and Jack Death is like, I need to send you back to, like, undo what you've done. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send you back through all of these different, you know, timelines. I'm going to send you back in time in your timeline so that you can just not allow, you know, the death of these villains and just let them do their deeds and mm -hmm. just let everything happen the way it's supposed to, and things will actually end up better and there's one joke about that oh what was it uh, puppet master it's like a puppet master sequel that they say oh, is really? going to happen and it, it just oh makes, and then it, and then it, it just makes me, it, it just yeah. makes me laugh because it's yeah because they do like a little editor's note which is a comic book joke mm -hmm. and um, okay yeah they're like from the upcoming puppet master curse of frankenreich because the, like a much more evil thing is coming now, which is this big Nazi look. It's almost like a big Nazi version of mm -hmm. Pinhead. And then, lo and behold, after he goes back and he's like fixing the timeline, then they say, uh, you know, no longer in production or something of that nature, which is actually very, very funny. Uh, well, yeah, you guys get the gist of it. So. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Okay, Puppet Master, Curse of Frankenreich, no longer upcoming. Yeah, which yeah. is funny. And they even because the timeline changes. Yeah, and they do the same thing with with Killjoy right there. And there there are references to some of the other. Killjoy things, you know, he's like, uh, you know, see Killjoy goes to hell, and then he's like, you know, you can't hold me, and they're like, spoilers, they actually can't, see Killjoy Psycho Circus, mm -hmm. so I mean, those sort of little editor nods I found funny, and I didn't hate this as much as the first time I read it, because I, yeah, I, I read you, it a few months ago. Yeah, neither of us ago. really liked it very much the first time we went through it. Yeah, but I mean, if you're a fan of the Full Moon universe, and you just want to see this amusing character service, and the second read-through especially, I was thinking of Thomerson delivering these lines as Bardo, and... I, I like the team up of him and, you know, his big full-size Trancers counterpart, Jack Death and stuff. And it's not it's not a good book. But then again, are there a lot of really good Full Moon movies? Not really, you know? And uh, this, if, if you're a fan of those properties, they all get their little, you know, focus in the spotlight, at least for an issue or for maybe five pages and some of the back half bits. So it's not... It's not as bad as maybe I was initially judging it as. So, I mean, if you like Full Moon, I say check it out. But if not, it's it's not going to win you over. I don't think you have to be a fan of Full Moon. To, yeah, to appreciate definitely, this. definitely. So, so. Yeah. so, yeah, I agree with, with all that. I mean, you, you do need to be a, a Full Moon fan. I didn't even like it, probably. I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't even go through it that much the second time. I just kind of fished through it and reviewed my notes from the first time. So... I'm still not quite as forgiving as Fuego was after mm. after his reread, but you know, if again, if you're a Full Moon fan, it's it's kind of must own stuff because it feels like canon because they do something and then they just kind of undo it by the end. But yeah, it's, it's all about the multiverses and changing mm -hmm. timelines and stuff in this day and age, whether it's Marvel or Stephen King or whatever, man. Yeah. Shared universe is big, so indeed. Yeah. So it's worth it from that angle, but uh, but yeah. Otherwise, maybe go ahead and skip this one. But yeah. until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, up and Jaime and Fuego. And remember, stay, stay scared. scared. Patrons, we love you.